Hey everybody and welcome back. I talk a lot about the villagers in Stardew Valley, but sometimes I can't include all the interesting information I dig up while researching for my videos. Today I want to shine a light on some fun facts that you may or may not know about the spouses and Krobus of Stardew Valley. Feel free to leave me a comment with the most interesting facts I missed, and don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying my videos. Let's go! Abigail has brown hair like Pierre when it's not dyed, but if you're married to her, she says she can't remember the last time she dyed it. Wait, what's that? That's not a very fun fact. Oh, okay. How about this then? Based on the poster of Chrono from Chrono Trigger above Abigail's TV, and the fact that her game console looks like a North American Super Nintendo, we can assume the in-game year is at least 1995. But wait, Sebastian has a poster of Pete from Harvest Moon. That means that it's at least 1997. There. Was that a more fun fact? I actually don't know. In the image of Alex holding a grid ball, which is definitely not an American football, he only has four fingers, including the thumb, on his left hand. Is that normal in this world? Well, Robin has four fingers and a thumb on her right hand in her waving portrait, and Caroline has all five fingers in her tea scene, so I don't know. On the other hand, Clint only has four fingers on his left hand in the Joja Cola scene. Something strange is afoot, or rather, a hand. <laughs> God, I'm hilarious. In Pelican Town. If you enter Elliot's home while he's at his writing desk, you can play the first eight notes of the Stardew Valley theme song on his piano, and he'll turn to you and give you a heart emote. It doesn't actually add any friendship points, but it is cute. Another couple of fun theories that I've seen are that Elliot might be a Junimo, because the same ambient noise plays in his house and in the unrepaired community center. I've also seen people thinking that he's a time traveler or like a merfolk. Nobody really seems to know what to think of this whimsical author on the beach, myself included. Emily is the only marriage candidate that I know of to mention Yoba, unless you're counting Grobus, and she only does it once a year. On summer 2nd, Emily will display this portrait and say, may Yoba bless you on this lovely day. This is both interesting and slightly threatening. Additionally, I've seen lots of folks talking about how Emily is vegetarian since some of her disliked and hated dishes include things like fish tacos, fried eel, and sashimi. But if you look carefully, you'll see that she actually does like crispy bass, carp surprise, fried calamari, and baked fish. Turns out she's just someone who likes bass and not tuna, carp but not salmon, octopus but not eel, and just don't give her any raw fish, whether you've prepared them for consumption or not. Leah might have celiac disease. She hates bread, pancakes, and pizza, and dislikes survival burgers, pink cake, and cookies. All these things require wheat flour to make. On the other hand, she also loves poppy seed muffins, which also requires wheat flour. So does she love those muffins, despite the terrible things they do to her tummy? Seems doubtful, but who can say? Also, just a quick callback to Abigail's fun fact. During Leah's art website 8 Heart Scene, she mentions tweaking her CSS sheets. The initial release for CSS was December 1996, lending more credence to the fact that it must be at least 1997 in Stardew Valley. Despite the fact that Haley is a photographer and develops her own photos in the darkroom in the house that she and Emily share, a darkroom is never added to the farmhouse after you marry her. This implies that she still has to return to her childhood home and walk through her old bedroom at Two Willow Lane to develop her photos. One fun thing to do during Haley's eight heart scene is to wear prismatic clothing. Somehow, despite the fact that photos should be static, you can see your clothing shimmering in the pictures. From a coding perspective, that just means that Concerned Ape probably used your live sprite during the photos instead of taking a static image to show you, and I just think that's a fun fact. That's why we're here. Maru's portrait has glasses, right? So why doesn't Maru's sprite have glasses? What's extra strange is that Pierre, Morris, and Harvey all have glasses on their sprites, so we have to assume it's not just an issue to make the pixel art. Does she only put them on to talk to you? I mean, no, but it's still silly. My best guess is that Concerned Ape made the Maru sprite based on the nearly completed Maru portrait, or vice versa. The most recent revision prior to the completed portrait lacks glasses, and I bet he made the sprite here and just moved on at that point. During Harvey's eight heart scene, he actually gives you a longitude and latitude for his office. Well, I mean, he gives it to a pilot, but anyway, he says that he's at 52 north, 43.5 east. On Earth, that would put Pelican Town basically in the middle of nowhere in Russia. 
Perhaps my earlier impressions about it being 1997 in North America aren't quite working anymore. Go figure. Also another fun fact, Harvey's sprite and portrait don't quite match. Just like Maru, he's missing a facial accessory. This time, it's a mustache. Just like Maru, earlier art for Harvey was missing this key part of his face, so I wonder if he just wasn't meant to have one until some last minute revisions. Penny is the villager who can have the largest swing in friendship points based on your responses in her heart events. At both 8 and 10 hearts, you can potentially lose 1,500 friendship points. With one heart equaling 250 friendship points, you can actually lose a grand total of 12 hearts across those two events, just by telling her you don't want kids, or that you don't like her the way that she likes you. However, you won't lose any hearts with Penny if you remove the cribs from your farmhouse. Not a suggestion, just an observation. I've seen it suggested a few times that Sam doesn't lose any friendship with the farmer when he catches them digging through the trash. It's true that his dialogue appears less disgusted than some of the villagers, but he does still lose 25 friendship points for seeing you, so don't think you're safe around old Samson. Oh yeah, that's another fun fact. Sam's full name is actually Samson. Oh, and sorry, one more fun fact. You can play the instruments in Sam's room. I feel like not everyone knows that one. In very, very early releases of the game, Sebastian's spouse room looked ever so slightly different. You know that little vase that Sebastian has right next to the black sofa in his room? Well, there used to be a little stem and a bowl attached to the side of that vase. The dialogue where Robin says she smelled something weird in Sebastian's ashtray makes a little more sense with that knowledge. And speaking of Robin, something I find quite sweet is that one of Sebastian's loved gifts is pumpkin soup, the only food recipe that you learn from Robin. The two ingredients are simply pumpkins and milk, neither of which he loves. So I think he just loves Robin's food, and that's adorable. Shane is a short king. You can talk to him after marriage at night, indoors, to hear that he wishes he was six inches taller and a whole lot smarter. Fun fact about me, I also feel that way. But Shane is actually quite short when you look at him in the flower dance. He is two pixels shorter than Sebastian, who appears to be the same height but is standing slightly lower, and 12 pixels shorter than Alex, who is the tallest bachelor if you ignore Sam's giant hair. Alex is 89 pixels tall, and I'm gonna assume he's about 6 foot 3 or about 190.5 centimeters. If one pixel is equal to about 0.8427 inches, Shane is roughly 5 foot 5 or about 165 centimeters tall. Like I said, short king. And finally, Krobus is the best spouse. Oh wait, that's that's not a fun fact, that's just a fact. Well, how about this? Despite the fact that you're not married to Krobus, you still need to go to the mayor's house to deal with his eviction papers. The difference is that it's free to kick Krobus to the curb instead of paying 50,000 gold like you would for a spouse. In addition, Krobus will stop talking to you at this point, similar to how the former spouses don't want to associate with you. But, just like a former spouse, you can use the Shrine of Dark Memories at the Witch's Hut to erase his memories and do it all over again. As long as you're not becoming an awful human being though, Krobus will hang out around the house and gladly help you raise the kids from your failed marriage with Shane. He even seems to think for some reason that the house was blessed by Yoba because there are either one or two kids in the household. It's possible that we were going to be able to have children with Krobus at one point and that the dialogue was never changed, or he might be suffering some cognitive issues because of all the gases he was huffing down in the sewers for all those years. Either way, Krobus really is the best spouse. What do you think about these facts? Did you learn anything new? Leave me a comment with any fun facts I missed, and I'll see you in the next video. Special thanks to these channel members and patrons for their continued support.